So this potential energy function describes the interaction between two atoms that are, that are bonded in a diatomic molecule. And we're trying to relate that potential energy function to the force between the atoms. Um, you should know that those forces between atoms are electrostatic in nature. So this has to do with electric forces between charged particles. But the story of how it ended up having exactly this form, we're not going to talk about that. So part A says compute the equilibrium separation distance for the atoms. And we're just left with these general parameters A and B, and I at least know that they're positive. So equilibrium, what that means is that the force is zero, but force is given by a derivative, actually a negative derivative of this potential energy function. Now, I don't care about the minus sign right now because I'm just trying to find the R where the derivative of this thing equals zero and therefore the force would be zero. So here's my reasoning. F equals zero at equilibrium. And since the force as a, set, a function of separation distance would be the negative of the derivative of the potential energy function, I'm looking for a point where du dr is equal to zero. In other words, equilibria occur at the local extrema of the potential energy function. So, um, and then I'm hoping it's a local minimum so that I can show it's a stable equilibrium instead of an unstable one. So let's differentiate this thing. That's a times r to the negative 12th. So I have u prime of r is equal to negative 12 a times r to the negative 13. And I'm just going to put it down here. And then my b term, I have br to the negative 6. And I bring down the negative 6 and I get positive 6. B, and then subtract one from the exponent on r, and I get r to the negative 7. So I have r to the 7 down here. And I'm trying to find out where is u prime equal to 0. And I'm going to multiply both sides by r to the 13. Might need a little more room here, so I'll shift up. And I end up with negative 12a plus 6b r to the 6. I multiplied that by r to the 13 and canceled 7 factors of r equals 0, and I'm going to solve for r to the 6, and I get 12a over 6b, which is 2a over b, and then I have to take the sixth root, so r equilibrium is going to be the sixth root of 2a over b. And again, the a and b there are just these different parameters that will change depending on what diatomic molecule you're talking about. Like, for example, there's a problem in the physics book where they talk about a carbon monoxide molecule. And that molecule has its own unique values for A and B. And you could find um, basically the size of the molecule, how far apart are the atoms, by solving this and plugging in A and B. All right, show that the equilibrium is stable. In other words, we're looking at a local minimum of the potential energy function. So... I posted a video where there's a discussion of why that's a stable equilibrium, and I'll just I'll leave it to that video. Um, so I'm trying to show that I'm at a local minimum of the potential energy function, and basically you have two choices. You could show that the slope of u was negative to the left of the point that we're looking at and positive to the right, and that would show that it's a local minimum. Or I could show that it's curving upward at this point where it's equal to zero. And that turns out to not be too hard in this case. Curving upward means a second derivative that's positive. So let's get u double prime of r. OK, so I have negative 12a r to the negative 13. So I've got to bring down a negative 13. And that gives me, my mental math is weak today. That gives me 156. OK, so it gives me positive 156 a over r to the 14 and then my second term i have 6b r to the negative 7 bring down the negative 7 and i end up with negative 42 b subtract 1 from the exponent on r which gives me a negative 8 so it's over r to the 8 and now i've got to somehow make a convincing argument that this is bigger than zero so i'm just going to try to manipulate it with algebra 
pull out a one over R to the eight. That leaves me with a 156 A over R to the six minus 42 B. And I'm sitting right at R equilibrium. So you double prime of R equilibrium. It's going to be one over R EQ to the eight. And I'm not worried about whether or not that's positive. And then if I plug in R to the six, that's two A over B. So I have 156 A over two A over B minus 42 B. And I think I have something now that's not hard to compare and, and show that I'm dealing with a positive quantity. Um, the A's cancel. And I get 156 over 2, um, which is 78. And dividing by 1 over B puts the B in the numerator. So I have 78B minus 42B. Yeah, that's 36B. Okay, so I have 36B over REQ to the 8th. I know that B is positive. I know this denominator is positive. So the second derivative is bigger than 0, which means I am sitting at a local minimum of the potential energy function, which is a stable equilibrium. If you haven't got to the video on stable equilibrium yet, it means that if you agitate this thing a little bit and knock it off of the equilibrium point, it's gonna wiggle back to where it started. And actually it'll cause vibrations to occur, which is exactly what we see in real life with diatomic molecules, so that's good. All right, part C. Make a rough sketch of the Leonard-Jones potential by thinking about small r and large r limits. Okay, we know there's a local minimum in there somewhere, um, but this idea of looking at small r and large r limits is really my main focus here. And what I need to ask myself is when r is big, which of these terms is going to dominate over the other one? So if you imagine even like, um, like r equals 10, this denominator would be 10 to the 6th. This denominator would be 10 to the 12th. So what that means is that this term is basically making a correction six decimal places later than this term so it's negligible when r is large the thing that has a larger power of r in the denominator is negligible so when r is big so when r is large i suppose my potential energy function is approximately just given by the term with the smaller power of r in the denominator and then i have to think about what does that thing look like qualitatively well, as r goes to infinity, it certainly goes to zero, but it's negative the entire time because b is a positive number. So I just figured out there's a tail on this function that looks something like this for large values of r. Let's look at small values of r. Which one of these terms is going to dominate? Well, dividing by a small thing gives you a big result. If I have like a small thing to the 12th power down there, that's way, 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 way smaller than a small thing to the 6th power. So this top term is going to dominate over this second term. So u of r is approximately equal to a over r to the 12th. And what does that look like qualitatively? When the separation distance r gets close to 0, this blows up to infinity. So it's a tail that looks like this. All right, and a is positive, so I know that that's a positive infinity. And then I know I've got a local minimum somewhere in between at some value r e q. And I'm ready to make my sketch of the curve. There's a, really only one option. It's got to dip down like this to the local minimum. And then it's going to spike to infinity. That's about as good as I can do with this drawing pad. And I can just add one more small thing. If we relate this to the force again, the force is the negative of the slope of the potential energy function, which means, just to review, at this separation distance, there is no force um, between the, the atoms, and they're going to just stay at that, at that point. If I went over here, DUDR is positive, which means the force is negative, which means if my atom is over here, again, these are, atoms are moving in a one-dimensional space, but I have to show a two-dimensional graph to show the energy. 
that would create a restoring force back to the equilibrium separation. And if I went over here, potential energy function has a negative slope, which means the force is positive. So if I was here, again, the force would point back towards equilibrium. So diatomic molecules vibrate all the time around that stable equilibrium separation because there's, there's a restoring force there. What we're going to do later in the semester is actually um, find A and B for a particular diatomic molecule. And then we're going to find the frequency of small oscillations for the vibration of the molecule. But it requires us to use uh, an infinite series, which sort of happens at the end of Math 21. So we'll get there when we get there.